Yo, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? Welcome back to the Steam 2 video. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a Void build. I know the Stasis and the Arc builds are the ones that have been, like, basically taking the spotlight recently. But we actually did get a couple of Void mods in the Artifact. And they actually make the Hunter specifically, the Prismatic Hunter, better than it's ever been before. Because we have one thing that we have never been able to get on the Prismatic Hunter, and that is Devour. I know, some of you guys are going to say, but the sidearm. And yeah, you could get the power on your Prismatic Hunter with the sidearm. But now we can do it without the sidearm. And do you ever consider wanting to have volatile weekend rounds? Well, that's something that we can have this season as well. And on top of that, we're still going to have invisibility, constant volatile rounds, and also some stasis abilities as well. Mostly our grenade. Now the things that you're going to need for this build are going to be pretty simple. You want the Grafalcon, it's not a chest piece, or a class item with the Grafalcon perk. And also one of the Void Pulse Rifles, either Collective Obligation or Graviton Lance. As long as you have those two things, you're going to be able to make this build work, and I'm going to explain the differences when it comes to like the weapons. So let's not waste any more time, let's get into it, and let's first start with our weapons. Now the reason that I gave you two different choices for its like Pulse Rifles is because I know some people won't have the Collective Obligation. Uh, this build was definitely designed with the Collective Obligation in mind first, but it can definitely still work with the Graviton Lance. And in some aspects of the build, the Graviton Lance actually is better. Mostly when it comes to the ad clear, since the Graviton Lance is just so good at ad clearing. Plus, all the weakening that we're going to be putting on targets makes the Graviton Lance just go crazy. Pretty much clearing entire waves of things. And the volatile rounds just kind of adds even more ad clear to the weapon. While the collective obligation, well, it doesn't have the ad clearing potential or something like the Graviton. It is still going to be pretty great at ad clearing thanks to the volatile rounds, but it does have a better odd time in the weakening, and by itself, if you steal like a weakened buff, you can turn it on while the volatile rounds are going and have those weakening volatile rounds. And that's what you're going to be seeing in the background when all these like yellow numbers pop up, those are those weakening volatile rounds, and they're beautiful. So overall, the collective obligation is just going to be better at applying weaken than the Graviton Lance, but the Graviton Lance is going to be stronger at doing the ad clear itself while still being able to proc weaken uh, quite a lot thanks to all the mods that we're running. Now for your other weapons, I would recommend grenade launchers in both slots. Uh, for the primary slot, I was using the Lost Signal because this thing is just fantastic. And for the heavy, I'm going to recommend the H-Transit. We're also going to be able to take advantage of volatile rounds and also we're going to be doing more damage thanks to one of our mods once we hit something with a stasis ability. So we throw like our grenade at the boss and then unload our edge chance it onto them, and we're just gonna be doing more damage. Now moving on to a super, we are gonna be on the tether. This gives us a bit more ad clear, and it's just gonna work very well with our build. Now for our dodge, we're gonna be on the gambler's dodge. Uh, this is gonna give us back our melee whenever we dodge next to an enemy, and that's gonna be really important since we definitely wanna spam our melee. Now for the melee, we are gonna be on the snare bomb. This is gonna be another way of weakening targets, spawning void breaches, which is a big part of the build. And also, we're going to be able to steal the debuff from the snare bombs as well. So, this going to be another way of getting the weakening buff on your collective obligation. Or just weakening things. You know, <laughs> itself, just weakening things is a pretty big deal. For the grenade, we are going to be on the dust field. This is going to help with ad control. And also, take advantage of some of the stasis mods that we have. As well as that mod that increases our void damage against stasis affected targets. This is going to be our main way of actually making that happen. And since we're going to have the power a lot of the time, we're actually going to be able to spam this quite a lot. Now for our first aspect, we're going to have a Stylish Executioner. This will let us go invisible whenever we defeat a target affected by a element to debuff. And the main way that we're going to proc this is by killing something that's been weakened or something that's slowed. And after that, we're going to get volatile rounds. And that just is going to proc itself just more and more. Meaning that as long as we can proc invisibility that very first time we're just going to be able to keep going invisible until we run out of enemies our second aspect is going to be winter shroud uh, whenever we dodge we slow things next to us so it's going to be another way of applying stasis and whenever we slow something with our dodge it is also going to increase the region of our class ability so it does make it so we can spam the class ability a little bit more but the main reason for this is just another way of applying stasis now moving on to the fragments, we gotta start with the very first one, which is gonna be Facet of Purpose. This is gonna give us an overshield whenever we pick up an overpower. Uh, the overshield gives us damage resistance, and it gives us a bit more health. After that, we're gonna have the Facet of Protection, whenever we're surrounded. 
we get damage resistance. This is going to be another thing that just helps us stay alive. Next, we have the facet of awakening. Rapidly defeating targets with light or darkness energy or super final blows create elemental pickups. And this is going to be really great since it's going to give us another way of creating those void breaches. The void breaches are very important because of the seasonal mods that we're using. It's basically going to be like the main way that we get just an AoE weaken. After that, we're going to have the facet of hope. Whenever we have an elemental buff, our class ability regens more quickly. This is going to proc with our devour and overshield our invisibility, so we're always just going to be getting our class ability back faster so we can get some more melee charges. And the last one is going to be the facet of command. Whenever we freeze or suppress a target, it's going to reload our weapons. And also, whenever we defeat a frozen or suppress target, it's going to give us stasis shards and also void breaches. So we actually are going to be getting quite a bit of void breaches, mainly from the tether. And for the stasis shards, that kind of works out with one of the uh, specific mods that we're running. Now, since we've been mentioning the seasonal mods, I'm sure you guys are wondering which ones are running. And first, let's get the easy ones out of the way. The grenade launcher ones. We have two grenade launchers on this loadout, so you definitely want to have all three of the grenade launcher mods. Now, some other mods that are pretty good, but they're not necessary to the build, would be uh, Killing Breeze to get some more movement speed, Crystalline Converter, which is going to take those stasis shots that we get and turn them into crystals, uh, Total Carnage will give you damage resistance after finishing the enemy, and lastly, the Vegetarian Wave will essentially just do some damage whenever you do a finisher. We're not really going to boost this one, so we don't get the extra uh, like weaken effect. We could, but I feel like there's other better ones that are going to be more effective for this build. But the main three mods that we're interested in are Supernova, Conduct the Cosmic Crystal, and lastly, Power from Pain. So let's start with Power from Pain. Power from Pain is going to be the main way we get Devour. Whenever we get Rapid Final Blows against weakened targets, that's going to give us Devour. And while that sounds like a hard thing to do, since it seems like we don't have too many weakened things, that's where our second mod comes in, which is Supernova. Whenever we pick up a Void Breach, it will cause our net source of Void Damage to create a large Weakening Pulse. It's essentially used like a Weakening Blast that comes from like the first enemy they shoot. And this is going to be the main way that we're going to be using the Weaken. And that's why we're going to have so many things that make Void Breaches. If you guys notice too, uh, Power From Pain, those have a boosted version that whenever we rapidly defeating Weakened targets, it spawns a Void Breach. So these two mods are essentially going to start like a feedback loop. Uh, Power from Pain will spawn those Void Breaches that trigger Supernova, that trigger Power from Pain again, that trigger Supernova again. And all you got to do to get this started is just pick up a Void Breach, which is going to be something that we're going to do quite easily. All we got to do is just kill things with our Void Weapon and it will spawn the Void Breach. Now the other very important mod, and this is mostly going to be for like whenever you do some boss damage, is going to be Conductive Cosmic Crystal. This is going to let our void weapons and abilities do more damage against targets that are affected by a stasis debuff. So this is going to mostly come down to our grenade. We throw our dust field grenade at a boss, uh, slow them, freeze them, and then pull out our big boy gun, our edge transit, a void weapon, and then just let them have it. And the damage from this buff is actually going to be quite noticeable. And since we're also going to be applying tons of weekend, it leads to us just being able to do a lot of damage to bosses. And lastly, let's take a look at the mods that are running on this build, but I feel like the mods on this build are not as impactful as maybe some of the other builds that we made. So, first of all, here for the helmet, we have Harmonic Siphon, so we can get some orbs of power from some of those Void Weapon uh, Finder Blows. And then we also have Special Armor Finder and also Scout, just so we can get some more special. For our Gauntlets, we have Void Loader, so we can reload our Void Weapons faster, uh, Focusing Strike, and also Momentum Transfer, these two are so we can reduce the cooldown of our grenade and also our melee. For our chest piece, we have just our normal resistances. Nothing really special for the chest piece, just resistances. For our boots, we have Absolution and Orbs of Restoration so we can get abilities back faster. And also Recuperation so we can heal with the orbs. And lastly for our class item, we have Outreach, Bomber, and Reaper. Reaper so we can make some more orbs. And then these two so we can get melee ability energy and also grenade ability energy. Now for exotic, I decided to go with the cloak since it has pretty much like the important part of the Falcon, which gives you those volatile rounds whenever you go invisible. If you don't have this on your exotic class item, 
think just using the regular chest piece will work just fine. Uh, we really just wanted for those volatile rounds. The other part of the perk doesn't really matter to us. But with that, that's going to be the end of the build, boys. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Now, the gameplay loop for this build is going to be pretty simple. The first thing you want to do is just get a Void Breach. And after that, that's when everything gets going. Uh, once you get the Void Breach and you have Supernova on, make sure that you shoot like a group of targets. Uh, don't you shoot like one lone enemy. You want it to be a group so it can spread that weaken around. So you can get your devour and so you can start making some more uh, Void Breaches. So you can trigger Supernova again. It doesn't seem to have a cooldown in between like triggering Supernova. Uh, sometimes it doesn't show up on the side like on your buffs. But you do have it because you do apply the weaken buff. So even if you don't think you have it on, you probably are just going to weaken anyways. So just keep that in mind. That even if it doesn't show up on the side, as long as you pick up a Void Breach, you will have it. I'm really happy with how this build ended up turning out. Especially the collective obligation. Those uh, weaken like volatile rounds are just... Chef's kiss. I love those weekend like volatile rounds. They're such a like weird thing, but they're so satisfying to use. And it's just a really good build for just clearing ads. Like in modes like Onslaught, this build is just godly. We're constantly just weakening things so things are dying faster. And also we're just constantly going invisible. I mean that it also adds a bit more survivability to the build. As well as the overshields. The overshields are also gonna help us survive. And overall, I just really like this void build. I feel like not a lot of people are paying too much attention to the void like mods. There's only like two of them, but they're so good that they're definitely worth using. But anyways, with that, we're going to wrap up today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did. This like if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel in case you guys haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a rest of the day. Peace.